This is the greatest hour to follow Jesus. Hey guys, welcome back. We are here with Eric Gilmore again. Last week was incredible. We really dove into Mary of Bethany. And man, I really believe, Eric, that God is, this is going to be, like he's got us here. He brought us here to this revelation of the majesty and simplicity of sitting with the Lord. And um, and so as you're listening today, what you're going to hear, I want to encourage you, go back, listen to last week's teaching on Mary of Bethany. Eric, as I said, was here with us. Ask the Lord not only for eyes to see this, but for a heart to remain at his feet. So, yeah, welcome. It's going to be a great day. Eric's back, man. Good to have you, bro. Yeah, Love you so man. much, man. So I want to remind you quickly about Jesus School. Make sure that you jump on the website. Check it out. Uh, it's going to be a year that will change your life. Eric is a part of it. Myself, Daniel, Kalenda, so many more uh, world changers are going to be uh, instructors at the school. It is a one-year school here in Orlando. And we begin August 30th, fall of 2018. We begin and go through May of 2019. And if you want to be part of a school that lives in a realm of worship, uh, worship will be preeminent here. We believe people are transformed in His presence. So we want to invite you to come and die at the feet of Jesus and come and dine at the feet of Jesus. It will be amazing. Jesus 18, believe it or not, is only 11 months away. I feel like we just got out of Jesus 17. We've We've added some amazing voices, some incredible worship leaders uh, to this year's event. Obviously, the the core group will be there, uh, but uh, Claudio Frizon is with us for the first time, Randy Clark. Heidi Baker is back with us for the second time. Bethel Worship is coming, Jeremy Riddle, Amanda, and Steph will be there. And Ingrid Rosario will also be coming to lead uh, worship in Spanish, and so, so many more. Are, are coming to be a part. Bethel Healing Rooms will be back uh, in the healing rooms, and we're sending out hundreds, if not thousands, to the streets again this year. So go to Jesus18.com, and you can get all the info you need on this, uh, what has become, for me, a really, really treasured week. So come join us December 12 through 15. Um, Eric has a school coming up February 3rd in Jacksonville. How can they find out about this, this school of his presence? Uh, on Eventbrite, they can register and see all the details. Okay, okay. so just go to Eventbrite and type in school of his presence. Jacksonville. Jacksonville. School of his presence, Jacksonville, on Eventbrite, and uh, you'll find out more. I feel like I have a radio voice right now. I like the flow of it. <laughs> <laughs> our Dallas regionals, our, our, I'm sorry, our Jesus regionals are coming up April 19 through 21 in Dallas. I'm sorry, April 19 to 21 in Houston, September 6 through 8 in Dallas. And my the rest of my schedule, you can find that on jesusimage.tv. Um, we've got a really uh, power-packed schedule coming up. So I want to invite you guys to come out for um, just some great times in the presence of Jesus. Okay, let's get after it. We're going to get back into Mary of Bethany. Father, we thank you for the presence of, of the Holy Spirit. That even now as people are driving in their cars, as they're listening, as they're at home, whatever they're doing, you're right there. And you never leave. You never leave, and we're grateful. And so, Lord, I ask you to speak and reveal the beauty of loving Jesus right now. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, Eric, take it away, bud. It's all yours. Yeah, so the last time that Mary's mentioned in the Scriptures is John chapter 12. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And we see here, many of the people have already read it, but we'll read, Mary then took a pound of very costly perfume and pure mm-hmm. nard mm-hmm. and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair, mm-hmm. and the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. Judas, one of the disciples, who was intending to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? Now he said this not because he was concerned about the poor, but because he was a thief. And as he had the money box, he used to pilfer what was put into it. Jesus said, leave her alone, so that 
she may keep it for the day of my burial. For you always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. So again, we see Mary, blinded by love to her surroundings. She takes a very costly vial of perfume and she pours it on his feet, wipes it with her hair. It's great to me that she pours all of it on him. Mm -hmm. A part of it? No. All of it because he is all to her. Wow. And what you give him, how much you give him, and what you hold back from him are all a measure of your love for him. The purity of her heart and her worship caused a rise in the impure Judas. And this is very um, telling mm -hmm. because workers always murder worshipers in one way or another. What do you mean by that? I mean, they look down on and see as see insignificant a life that simply lives by looking to the Lord. Mary actually scandalizes all those who love the work of the Lord more than yeah. the Lord of the work. The purity that she had of only wanting him exposed the impurity of wanting something from him. Mm -hmm. You know, Judas says this should have been sold and given to the poor. Jesus says the poor you'll always have with you. In other words, it's almost as if Jesus is saying someone greater than good things is here. It's not a bad thing to give to the poor, but someone greater than good things. He is there. saying that. <laughs> yeah, it's not as if. He is. <laughs> yeah. So he's more important. <laughs> and as she smeared the perfume on him, and this is where it just gets really, uh, really touching. Mm -hmm. As she smears the perfume on him and dries it with her own hair, now she smells like him and her... Uh, uh, she smells like him and her like him, right? Either mm -hmm. way. So that's a beautiful picture of a life of adoration. The divine mingling, the fragrance of their love was experienced by everyone around them. And Mary hits right there the heart of the gospel. She shows that the heart of the gospel is to be mixed with him and to become the message. Yes. And not just preach a message and do good things, yes. but to, through worship and adoration, be mingled together with God and become something everyone else experiences of God. When we get intimate with the Lord, we become a means by which others can experience it. Maybe Man, this that's is what, so good. isn't it? Yeah. Well, well, this is probably what Paul meant when he is saying, we are a fragrance of life unto life to some and death unto death to others. And so when we look at this, we remember that this is a woman who never wrote a book, never preached a sermon. Mm -hmm. We see that this ordinary woman who never performed a miracle stole the heart of Jesus. And that's what we're looking for, is that uh, this intrinsic part of the gospel, seen in the person of Mary, would be what the gospel produces in us, which is a life that is mingled with God through adoration and becomes a message to all generation, generations and affects everyone around us with our sweet, personal, intimate exchange with Him, bearing the same fragrance as Him. To carry the fragrance of the Lord, some of our favorite guys mm -hmm. were known for carrying an actual fragrance. Actual Lord, fragrance, yeah. An actual fragrance. But to literally linger, linger with Him I know you've had many times. We were actually in Boston one time, mm -hmm. and I don't know if this is okay to say. Yeah, but when we were in Boston, <laughs> we, we, we jumped were, off that cliff a long time ago. <laughs> we were in separate rooms, but next to each other, uh -huh. and we both smelled oil flood our flood our rooms as yeah. we worshipped. Yeah, we did. And we came out and spoke about it simultaneously. Yeah, and we were shocked that the Lord. Yeah, visited both well, we've had the fragrance many times. Um. You know, maybe you're listening and this sounds weird to you. It really shouldn't. This is this is beautiful. The Lord is able and He can do all of these things. And they're beautiful, beautiful signs that make us want to love Jesus more. Uh, I remember one time I was preaching in Chicago for Dave, Papa B.C., back when he lived there. And there was a Greek Orthodox couple who grew up Greek Orthodox who were coming to the meeting. I was preaching in Frankie's house. 
No, I was preaching at the church, at Cross Culture, right? Yeah. yeah. I was preaching there, and in the Orthodox Church and in the Catholic Church, we grew up with um, incense uh, in the church. They would burn incense in the church, symbolic of the prayers of the saints, and the prayers of the saints in heaven, meeting the prayers of the saints on the earth, and coming up as a memorial to the Lord. And so as I was preaching, that smell went down the, was wafting out of the church, and they followed it in from the sidewalk no way. into the building. So, yeah, the Lord, the fragrance of the Lord is a <laughs> is an amazing thing. I want to go, I want to touch on this tension between Judas and Mary. Yeah. And you, you you already did touch on it, but I want to go deeper. Mm-hmm. Because interestingly enough, Ju- Judas had no desire to help the poor, mm-hmm. though it was his first method of defense when she unleashed worship in front of him. There's something that worship does, costly worship, that offends that spirit why is that? Hmm. What, 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 what do you see? I mean, what, what is competing against one another in this picture? To me, it's the intent. Because the scripture says about Judas in verse 4, it says he was intending to betray him. His intent in his heart was ill. Oh, but her intent was to exalt him and to remember that he was knowing that he was going to die, mm-hmm. she put the oil on him. And so her intent was pure, and his intent was not. So to me, it's the judging between thoughts and intents of the heart. To the way of a, of a man seems right in his own eyes, but the Lord looks at the intent. Mm-hmm. And so I think that the intent inside of a man's heart is the clearest vision of that man. Remember when David is being called out, God says... Right, man looks at the outward appearance, or um, was it Samuel that says it? Yeah. Man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart, the intent. What is the intention here? And I think a lot of people can do the same things with a widely different intention. Wow. And I think what Mary is doing is, with pure intent, she is causing a rise in the impure intent. And so I think this is what worship does and that's why there's a divide a lot of times down the middle that separates intentions it's the word of the lord scripture says in hebrews 4 12 that the Mm -hmm. word of the lord is like a sharp sword Mm -hmm. so this is what he the living word does he divides the intents remember when the disciples came to him and they were like where do you live or when they he sees them following him he turns around and he looks at them he goes right to the intent What what do you want what do you want what are you looking for? Yeah. And this is what the presence always does. What do you really want here? Yeah. And th- that's the first thing he ever said to the disciples. Think of that. Straight to the heart. Right to the heart. Um, I want to stay on this for a few more minutes. I feel the Lord on it. Um, can we minister to the Lord? I mean, she's something's going on here. Mm-hmm. Would you call what she's doing ministry to the Lord? Yeah. Why? How? How can I minister to the Lord? Why would He need that? I see the imagery itself is showing us that she's ministering to the Lord. The Scripture says that when she took that uh, costly perfume, Pernard, and anointed the feet of Jesus, we see that she's again in a low place. She has come, let us worship, and bow down. She's at his feet with a revelation. What is the revelation? He goes on to say, she's anointed me for burial. In other words, she's so far ahead of all the disciples. Because even the disciples... And the Lord had tried to tell them, I'm going to die. Yeah, and they scattered when he he, was gone. But she had a revelation of him and believed him that put her in a different category as anybody else. Not only do I believe you're going to die... I know you're going to die, and I'm going to worship you and give you what you need for burial, which was the oil, you know. 
And I love that illustration you just recently told me that when he was on the donkey, mm -hmm. he had that oil on him, mm -hmm. and the wind, which would be representative of the pneuma or the spirit, yeah, flooded the city. Flooded the city because it blew on him who wore that yeah. that oil. So true. Yeah. What is who is it? I think it was um, uh, Charlie uh -huh. that was telling me. If it wasn't Charlie, it was it was Austin uh -huh. who said that when he was on the cross, he had that oil on him. Yeah. And that oil was the same oil that they would anoint prophets, priests, and kings with. Mm -hmm. And so when they have the nail in their hands, and they go to nail it into his feet. They can smell the fragrance yes, of a king. That's true. And so they're nailing down with every nail. They know they're killing a king. Yeah. Behold. And with every slap and with every punch. Yeah. He still smells like, like a, a king. king. I want to die. I want to just want to go a little deeper here and stay here. That's what Madame Guyon said, right? Mm -hmm. Stay on the flower. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Why would God be moved? God. Mm -hmm. What is it about God that would cause him to be moved by a woman mm. who pours oil on his feet? Man. What kind of God is this? Man, can I, can I go right to John chapter 1 yeah. real quick? This is what I think of when you ask that question. In John chapter 1, it says... And this really touches me, especially recently in my life. This has really been hitting me hard. It's in verse 10. It says, man, it says he was in the world, and the world was made through him. Mm -hmm. And the world did not know him. He came mm -hmm. to his own, mm -hmm. and those who were his own did not receive him. Mm -hmm. So you see the very hands that fashioned the world. He comes to be with his own people that he's made. And number one, they don't recognize him. Why? Uh, he's the light. Light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than the light. That's what I would say, mm -hmm. unless, unless there's more to it. But I really feel like what is being shown here is that he has come to his own people, his own family, and his own family doesn't even recognize him. Man. He has come to his own family, and they reject him. It's like me coming home tonight, and I walk in to see my kids who I love, who I'm, in a sense— I'm responsible for mm -hmm. I walk into my house and when I walk in my kids scream this man is in here I don't know who he is my heart would be completely broken my little girls don't know who I am mm -hmm. and Jesus who made all things and every person in their mother's womb comes to them excited you can imagine how excited he was to see all these people that he made and he knows every bit of their makeup and their personalities their nose their eyes and he comes to look at them with joy and they say I don't know who you are Mm -hmm. And not only that, but when he does tell them who he is, they say, no, you're not that. And they reject him. And so to me, Mary anointing the feet of Jesus, the reason why it's so special to him is because he found in her one who believed mm -hmm. who he was, who he says he was. And the scripture tells us what happens when we believe that he is who he says he is. It says, but as many as received him, <laughs> to them he gave the right to be sons even to those who believe in his name. So this sonship, being born of God, is the ultimate reason why Jesus came. And in Mary, he found someone who recognized him. Wow. And someone who wouldn't reject him, but who would receive him. And so to me, when we worship, what we're doing is saying, I recognize you, mm. and I worship you, yeah. and I receive you. And that's what the essence of sonship is. I recognize you. Mm, beautiful. And because I recognize you, I worship you. Wow. That's beautiful, man. Why don't you pray for the people? Yeah. Lord, by your spirit, I ask that you would help us, every person hearing this, Michael and myself as well, that you would help us recognize you and receive you through worship. Give us a spirit of adoration, a spirit of erupting adoration mm. that you might find in us those who you made, 
a home, a place yes, where Lord. you are recognized and received. We worship you. Yes. Father, we thank you. Lord, for the power of the Holy Spirit right now. Lord, that everyone listening who's suffering, who's uh, addicted and tied down, Lord, that you would liberate them right now, that every sickness would die under the sound of our voice. That, Lord, you would come into that moment right now like a, like a beautiful, thick cloud and that, and that you would drive sickness away. In the name of Jesus, we, we speak to every bondage, every sickness, and command it to leave. And Lord, most importantly, I pray now that you'd be glorified in our hearts, that you'd be loved by us. And that person listening, um, who, if you don't know Jesus, if you've never met the Lord, if you've never come to him, and it, while Eric was speaking, if you've never known Jesus this way, if you never knew that he was this real, mm. You know, as the scripture says, as many as received him, to them he gave the right to be called sons of God. And it's, it's in this receiving of Jesus himself, the actual person of Jesus, not the thought of Jesus, mm -hmm. not, the, not the, the knowledge of Jesus, but it's coming to a living, breathing person and giving him your life and maybe you don't even know this. Do you know that Jesus died for you? That he hung on a cross? That he shed his blood? That he bled and died to pay for your sin? And to, to wash your sin away? And on top of that, for you to have what Eric's been talking about. So that the Holy Spirit would come and live inside of you. Live inside of you, literally. Yes. Make your body his house and then offering you a life of knowing him of loving him hearing him feeling him this is eternal life mm -hmm. and that's what Jesus is offering you right now it's possible you've been in the church your whole life but you never met Jesus and maybe you're like people close to me who are in a really dark place right now or bound with drugs, or maybe you're sick and you've given up on the Lord. Maybe you've turned your heart away from Him. Come to Jesus right now. Just ask Him. Say, Lord Jesus, here I am. Take my life. Take, take my life. I lay my life down at your feet. I know you died on a cross to wash my sin away. I know you shed your blood. And I know you've been raised from the dead. I believe you are who you say you are, as Eric said. Mm. I receive you, Lord. You receive me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. What an amazing time. What an awesome touch of his presence. I want to remind you and uh, to um, of Eric's school of his presence. I'm sitting here wiping the tears away. This is what happens when um, when God begins to move through Eric. So I want you to, uh, if you're hungry, get to that School of His Presence in Jacksonville on February the 3rd. You can check that out on Eventbrite. Also, if you've never partnered with Jesus Image on a monthly basis, uh, we really need your support, and uh, it would be such a privilege to walk with you. And uh, we're believing God for our facility. We're meeting consistently at different uh, locations, doing our best to nail down this facility, but ultimately it will take millions and millions of dollars to see our dream come true, which is a house for his, of His presence, a dwelling place for God, where it, people can run and find safety in His presence and love, and then from there send people to the nations of the world to share that same love. Also, if you've never partnered with Sonship International, if Eric's touched you, if you felt your heart burn as mine, as mine did and always does when I'm with them, I want to invite you to partner with, uh, with Sonship International. They can do that at sonship-international.org. So go ahead and do that as the Lord leads you. Eric 
has a book out, How to Prosper in Everything, and you can get that on Amazon. Eric's books are incredible. They get straight to the heart and lead you to want to love Jesus even more. Again, Jesus School is right around the corner. Mm -hmm. So if you are planning on coming, you need to apply. We've already begun looking through the applications, and calls will begin early next week to those who have applied. Um, and we'll begin the interview process. So if you haven't applied and you want to come, you need to apply. That's at jesusschool.tv. And as I said before, Jesus 18 in, in Orlando, December 12 through 15, will be absolutely amazing. You can check that out at jesus18.com. And our Jesus regionals are in Dallas and Houston. So if you haven't subscribed to this podcast, please go ahead and do so. Also, I, I want to encourage you to subscribe to all of our, or to our YouTube channel. Make sure to follow us on Facebook. Uh, you can follow Jesus Image. You can follow my public page, which is Michael Culianos. You can follow Eric on Facebook. How do they do that? Just, just search your name. Um, his posts are, are awesome, and you can actually witness some dialogue between between he and I at times, just to keep you on your on your toes. Make sure to subscribe to his YouTube. Follow him on Instagram at Sunship Interna Sunship INTL Sunship International, and you're on Twitter and all of that good stuff. Okay, we love you guys. We'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us. Bye bye. To get daily teaching from Michael and to follow our event schedule around the world, please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Be sure to subscribe to the Jesus Image TV YouTube channel as well. By partnering with Jesus Image, you will help us take the saving and healing power of Jesus to the world. Your giving changes lives forever. For more information, please visit us online at JesusImage.tv or write us at Jesus Image, P.O. Box 950-640, Lake Mary, Florida, 32795. Thank you for your prayers and financial support. Jesus is the answer for every life, everywhere.